obviously there are quite a few additions in Geometry Dash 2.2, with a few of the notable changes being the swing copter, a load of new triggers, and even a whole new game mode, which allows you to move in a non-linear way. But I'm not here to talk about the big new features that I've already showcased a few million times. What about those features that go unnoticed by quite a few people? The ones that have become the bread and butter of my Geometry Dash experience. The peanut butter to my jelly. The apple to my pie. The... you get the point. Gone are the times of having to press this unfortunate button six or seven times only to realize that your blocks were still off-centered. And then having to press this other button a few more times until you lost your mind when you just couldn't get the blocks to center correctly on top of each other. Half block movement in the editor is probably my favorite underrated part of this update. I honestly do not know how this was not added into the game scene. It seems like such a simple thing that could have prevented years of pain if it was released in 2.1. Teleport portals used to be the weakest and most underused object in the game. I mean, sure, you probably used it a few times when making transitions inside of your level. But using it inside of your gameplay, you quickly realize that it just didn't provide any momentum boost similar to games like Portal. You know, I'm not the only one who is disappointed when using these portals for the first time in 2.1. And if I was, well, maybe that's just my love for the portal series speaking. 2.2 introduced new mechanics for these portals. That's right. Not just one, multiple. Gone are the days of throwing gravity portals or jump pads inside of your transitions to make it look like you've attained your momentum throughout. Rather, we can achieve this simple effect by simply pressing Edit Special and changing the redirect force or the static force. Static force allows you to set the specific exit speed of the portal, while redirect force gives you a specified speed depending on how fast you entered the portal. When combined with platformer mode, this could achieve some very cool platforming physics puzzles, which I really hope to see in the future. For the entirety of the game's existence, we've been stuck only changing the background and the ground. Until now, where we have the ability to make a middle ground. The middle ground serves as a transition between the background and the ground. With the addition of two new triggers, changing the speed and location of the middle ground is now feasible. The middle ground isn't all sunshine and rainbows, however, because we only have three options available to us, and neither of them look that great. On the other hand, we have so many options to choose from when it comes to background and ground deco. I'm sure you've probably seen my video about show hitboxes being one of the, my favorite features in Geometry Dash 2.2, but if you haven't already, I'll link it above. For the uninformed, thousands of users have installed Mega Hack V7 for many different reasons, whether it be start position switcher, FPS unlocker, or my personal favorite, show hitboxes. With many of the features from Mega Hack V7 being added to 2.2, I simply don't see a reason to have it installed anymore. I remember when Super Probably Level by Alkali came out five years ago. Side note, has it already been five years? I was super excited to try it out for the first time, only to realize that I have absolutely no idea how to play the level and practicing it is a nightmare because I have no idea what the heck is going on. I think I might attempt the level again after I beat XO solely for the reason that practicing it has just become 10 times easier than it was before with show hitboxes on. Show FPS is a staple of gaming, so it was inevitable that it would be added to the game. You could argue that Steam has a built-in FPS counter, but when you crunch the numbers, more than half of the Geometry Dash player base is on mobile. But why is show FPS important? Why should you care that this was added into the game? Well, here's a quick list of reasons why I think this is underrated. Number one, it allows you to better optimize your levels for the average player. Imagine opening the feature tab to find out every level has the same object count as Astral Divinity, but it's only one minute long. That doesn't seem too fun. Number two, well, I didn't think I'd get to number two, so I, I didn't plan this far ahead, so, uh, um, this video is getting too long, so I'll give you five features in 50 seconds starting now. Number six, new icon colors. We can now change our icon colors very easily. Previously, we had to scroll through about three or four pages. Now every color is on one page. Number seven, glow. On the topic of player colors, we can now change our glow colors. Easily doable with mods before, but now it's in the base game. How neat, right? Number eight, icon animations. What is this, Fortnite? Anyways, now we get to laugh about our robot pretending to be a ball. Number nine, disable shape. Do you really need an explanation for this one? Number 10, limitless editor options. We now have over 9,000 new group and color channels to work with. We are no longer limited to how optimized we can be with our groups. This is a huge deal for effect creators like Sputnik and minigame creators like CJOAN. Have you ever made a Geometry Dash level? 
Well, me too. Hundreds, in fact. But have you ever used the scale tool? Frustrated because you couldn't scale bigger than 2x or less than half of the size because of built-in limitations? No? Just me? Well, what if I told you there is now a setting that allows us to scale from 0.25x to 8x the size of a normal object, hidden in plain sight? Crazy, right? And not only are we able to scale objects 8x and 0.25x, but we can also scale it endlessly. Using the warp tool allows us to do many funky things that we couldn't do before. Like this, for example. There are so many more options available to us with this tool. Too many to go over in one video. So if you want to see a video more in depth on editor tools, please take a few seconds to let me know in the comments and subscribe while you're down there. I love icons for the simple fact that we can customize them, and not just by selecting different characters. We can change two separate player colors, glow color, death effects, and more for nine different icons. It's one of the big things that really sets Geometry Dash apart from other similar games. However, in early updates prior to 2.2, there was no way to find out how to unlock different icons without looking it up on the wiki. In 2.2, those times have changed. To find out how to unlock your favorite icons, you just click on the lock. It's as simple as that. Now, all that's left to do is to unlock them, or just use some alternative methods. Either way, this is definitely a welcome change, and I'm surprised not many people were talking about it the day the update came out. The removal of Hall of Fame. Now, this might be a bit of a controversial take, but come on. When's the last time you actually clicked on the Hall of Fame? I'm 99% sure not a single soul even knew what the Hall of Fame did. It only showed epic rated levels. With the new ratings that were added, those being legendary and mythic, of course, it only made sense that this useless page faded with time. New dungeon chests. A lot of them, actually. Now, sure, you have the argument that having to collect 3,500 demon keys is a bit unnecessary, especially when you realize that every 500 orbs equals one demon key, meaning you have to collect 1.75 million orbs before you can even think about collecting all chests. But hear me out. We now have hundreds of new icons and colors with the addition of these chests. You could also say that there could have been much better ways of unlocking them. Do you really want to like or dislike 10,000 more levels or get 100,000 stars just to unlock a few silly little icons? My takeaway is that it's better to grind for orbs than it is to grind liking and disliking levels. I mean, at least you're having fun when you're playing levels, which is better than mindlessly clicking away in the menu. We now have the ability to see old daily and weekly levels. This is very cool. I've been asking for this for a while now, but now that it's in the game, I have a few things to say about it. The main reason I believe weekly and daily levels are even played or attempted is to acquire more stars than possible with a singular level. I'll admit, I'm guilty of beating a daily level and then immediately clicking on the user's profile to attempt to beat it again for extra stars. You're probably starting to see where I'm going with this, because while we can see these previous levels, we can't actually acquire extra stars from them, which sucks for many new players who want to grind to the top of the leaderboard. I'll leave you with this. The average level is about 5 star difficulty, and there's been over 2600 daily levels. That's about 13,000 stars that a lot of people simply can't acquire anymore. The tiny Michigan heart in the community shop credits. This can't be expressed enough. RobTop is probably the only solo game developer that is a, as active as he is with his community. On a near bi-weekly schedule, he consistently chats in the Discord with his community members. And with Michigan's unfortunate passing on March of 2021, the community fell silent. So it was a neat surprise to wake up to 2.2 one day and see a cool tribute to one of the game's most influential players. And that concludes the 17 most underrated features in Geometry Dash. If you really wish to see more content like this, I have many ideas in the works and I will try to upload one video similar to this each month at minimum. If you have any suggestions, ideas, tips, or criticism, please comment them as I read every comment that comes through. Thank you for watching until the end, and until next time, peace.